This is part five for the uh, lecture material for chapter 10 in general biology one. Okay, so let's start off this material by looking at the stages of meiosis. And first let's go back here and look at the diagram. And you notice we're going to start with interphase, and interphase is just like interphase prior to mitosis. We have an intact nucleus, DNA is uncoiled as chromatin, there is a nuclear envelope in place, and very likely to have one or several nucleoli within the nucleus. Then we're going to go through a meiosis 1 and a meiosis 2. Okay, meiosis 1 is going to separate the, uh, the homologs. It's going to reduce chromosome number by one half and it's going to change us over from diploid to haploid. Meiosis 2 is going to separate the sister chromatids. So there's no change in ploidy level here. Uh, it's, it's haploid all the way through this, but it does uh, it does separate the two the two uh, chromatids from each other. Okay, so let's go back here. Now we're going to have a prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. All the way through this process, that is all the way interphase through the first division here through telophase one, these cells are diploid. They have <clears throat> homologous chromosomes in the same cell all the way through telophase 1, so they're diploid. Okay, so prophase 1, we have the, uh, the nuclear envelope is breaking down, it's dissolving, chromosomes have formed from the chromatin, but this time the chromosomes are paired together as homologous pairs. We have another process that occurs during this time. It's called crossing over. It's an exchange of chromatid segments between homologs. Then we go into metaphase one, where the pairs of homologs are lined up around the equator of the cell. Go into anaphase one, where the entire double-stranded chroma, uh, the entire double-stranded homologs are separated from each other. And then we go into telophase one. These homologs have reached opposite ends of the cell. To some degree, they may start to uncoil back towards chromatin, and there may be partial development of a new nucleus. And of course, cytokinesis occurs. Okay, cytokinesis that separates the uh, that divides the cytoplasm and separates that into two new cells. So, all the way through this first division interphase. Prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, the cells are diploid. Now, once this has separated into two cells, these cells are haploid the rest of the way through this process. So you notice here's our large chromosome in this cell. Its homolog is in a completely separate cell. Here's a small chromosome. Homolog is in a completely separate cell. So this is prophase two. Any development of a nucleus that may have occurred undoes itself now. So if the chromosomes uncoiled to any extent back towards chromatin, they now coil back up. If there was any development of a nuclear envelope, it now dissolves and breaks down. Okay, then we move into metaphase two. And notice this is happening in both of these cells at the same time. So metaphase two, these chromosomes lined up, these double-stranded chromosomes line up individually around the equator of the cell. Then we go into anaphase two, and the centromere split, and the sister chromatids are pulled towards opposite ends of the cell. Then we'll go into telophase two, these sister chromatids reach opposite ends of the cell that begin to uncoil back towards chromatin and new nuclear envelopes form and cytokinesis occurs. The end result of this is that we get four haploid daughter cells. Okay, these are the cells that can now go on and become the gametes. So, in 
with mitosis we had a repeating cycle because there was no change in the uh, chromosome number or the genetic information. Here in this process, meiosis, we've reduced the chromosome number by one half and each of these new cells is genetically different from, from one another as well as from the original mother cell. So this process of meiosis is not part of a repeating cycle. It is a one-time event. These cells that come out of meiosis do not go through meiosis again. Now they may undergo some development to become uh, the uh, egg cells or the sperm cells, but they do not go through meiosis again. Okay, so let's go on down here and look at the specifics of what's happening in each stage. In interphase, the cell is diploid, and this is just like interphase prior to mitosis. This is a stage when the cell is not dividing. It's the longest stage of the cell cycle. The DNA is uncoiled as chromatin. And we have an intact nucleus. We have nucleoli present. And we have a nuclear membrane that is intact and present. So here's kind of a sketch of, of this at interphase. And we have an intact nuclear membrane have uh, nucleolus within the nucleus and the DNA is uncoiled as chromatin filling that space within the nucleus. These things right up here are the uh, centrioles. Okay, then prophase one. We have a cell that is diploid and the chromosomes are going to form from the chromatin. The nuclear membrane dissolves and spindle fibers form and they attach to the kinetic to the kinetochores. Okay, here we go, prophase one. You see the uh, remnants of the nuclear envelope there, indicated by the dashed line. Chromosomes have formed, and they group together as homologous pairs. Notice those two form a homologous pair. These two form a homologous pair. Okay, now, during prophase one, we have an event called synapsis. So synapsis occurs. Synapsis, this is where the homologous chromosomes pair together. Homologs are held together by what's called a synaptonemal complex. And this synaptonemal complex consists of uh, strands of proteins that connect the scaffolding proteins of the homologs. And these pairs of homologs form what's called a tetrad. In other words, there are four strands or that is four chromatids, and thus that is referred to as a tetrad. Okay, so notice uh, the diagram right here. We have the maternal chromosome, we have the paternal chromosome. In other words, this is a copy of the chromosome that this individual got from mom. This is a copy of the chromosome this individual got from dad. Now, these are held together by what's called a synaptonemal complex. And here you can kind of see that in this electron micrograph. Okay, now the other thing that happens as this synaptonemal complex begins to dissolve and allow the chromosomes to separate from one another, there are places along here where the, the chromosomes are held together. And that forms what's called chiasmata. And these chiasmata are points at which a process called crossing over can occur. So during prophase one, right at the very beginning of meiosis, we get this process called crossing over. Crossing over is the exchange of chromatid segments between the homologs. Okay, it's kind of wordy right here, but the process of crossing over is that in late prophase one, the synaptonemal complex will dissolve. That allows the centromeres and most of the length of the homologs to separate from one another. Homologs will still adhere to one another at isolated points along the length of the chromosome, along the length of these homologs. At these points, the non-sister chromatids cross over each other, forming an X shape. Okay, at these locations, the chromatids can break and join with the chromatid of the other homolog. 
the points where the chromatids cross one another are called chiasmata. Chiasmata is plural, chiasma is a singular. And this name comes from the Greek letter chi, which is basically an X, and it's called that because the structure looks like an X. Okay, so here's kind of a sketch of uh, the idea of prophase one. We have these two homologous chromosomes. I've got them sketched slightly differently so that we can keep up with the uh, chromatids from each one. These will cross, o literally cross over one another and form that chiasma right there, that X shape. At that point, they will break, swap partners. And so you notice this strand is now changed and this strand is now changed. During the process of meiosis, these two homologs will separate, then the sister chromatids will separate, and so we're going to end up with four cells, and each of these strands is in a different cell. So this strand is unchanged, this strand is unchanged, but these two strands right here have swap segments. Now the importance of this is that this crossing over gives new combinations of genes that are carried on the same chromosome. If it wasn't for this process, then if you had a gene here and a gene here, those would always be passed along together for generation after generation. Okay, let's go on and look at metaphase one. The cell is diploid. These tetrads line up around the midplane of the cell of the cell and the sister kinetochores that is kinetochores of the sister chromatids attached to the spindle fibers from the same pole so in other words these two sister chromatids right here are attached to spindle fibers from this pole as opposed to what happened in mitosis where they attach to opposite poles okay this other homologue the two sister chromatids are attached to this pole Okay, anaphase 1, diploid, the homologs are pulled towards the opposite ends of the cell. And notice they're being pulled along by that centromere, and the arms of the chromosome are dragging along behind it. Gives it kind of that V-shape, except we have double-stranded chromosomes. Telophase 1, the cell is diploid. These double-stranded chromosomes reach the opposite poles. Might be a slight tendency to form new nuclei. Cytokinesis occurs, producing two new cells. Okay, so here's our diagram. This is in the process of cytokinesis. Large chromosome with the centromere in the middle. There's its homolog. Smaller chromosome with centromere near the end. Here's its homolog. Okay. Now then, there's a process called interkinesis. This is very brief, interphase-like stage. The stage may or may not occur. We are not going to worry about this stage right here. I'm not going to ask you to identify this one. Okay, then we're going to have prophase 2. It's haploid. All these other stages are haploid from here on out. So the double-stranded chromosome, we have double-stranded chromosomes and two cells. Spindle fibers form attached to the kinetic cores. Any traces of the nuclei disappear. This occurs in both cells, and there's no pairing of the homologs. Homologs are in separate cells. Here we go. We have two cells. This is haploid. Okay. Metaphase two. We it's haploid. Double-stranded chromosomes line up individually. Then anaphase two. The uh, centromere split. Sister chromatids pull towards opposite ends of the cell. Telophase two. Still haploid. The single-stranded chromosomes reach opposite ends of the cell, start to form new nuclei, cytokinesis occurs, and we end up with four haploid cells, and the cells from meiosis, meiosis rather, become the gametes, that is the egg cells and sperm cells. Okay, we'll pick up with this idea in the next one. Meiosis causes gametes to be genetically different from each other.